James Martin Hannett, initially credited as Martin Zero, was a record producer and an original partner director at Factory Records with Tony Wilson. Hannett's trademark sound, most apparent on Joy Division's debut album Unknown Pleasures and its follow-up, Closer, is sparse, eerie and cavernous. Biography equals Early years equals, Born in Manchester, Lancashire, England, Hannett was raised in a working-class, Catholic family in Miles Platting, Manchester. He attended Corpus Christi School and Xavierian College in Rusham. In 1967, he began to attend UMIST, where he earned a degree in chemistry but chose not to pursue that profession. Equals career equals, Martin's uncle was a bass player and he gave Martin a bass guitar when Martin was 14. Martin played bass with Spider Mike King and his member in a band called Paradox, in 1973, alongside Paul Young, later of Sad Cafar Copyright and Mike Plus The Mechanics. His production work began with the animation film soundtrack All Kinds of Heroes, written by Steve Hopkins. By this time, he also began to mix live sound at pub gigs. Other early production works included Greasy Bear Material, Belt and Braces Road Show Band's eponymous album, in 1975, and five songs from Pete Farrow's repertoire recorded at Pennine Studios, Oldham, later included on that artist's compilation album Who Says There's No Beach in Stockport. He would first attract wider musical attention in 1977, when, as Martin Zero, he produced one of the first independent punk records, the Buzz Ox Spiral Scratch EP. Under the same moniker he produced early records by punk poet John Cooper Clarke, whose Salford monotone was complemented by drum machines, simple synthesizer motifs, and Hannett's own bass playing. Jilted John's first single was Hannett's first hit single. Hannett became closely associated with Joy Division. Hannett's production incorporated looping technology to treat musical notes with an array of digital filters and both Melo's analog tape and Melo's bucket brigade early digital echoes and AMS digital delay units of which Hannett owned several. The Melo's tape and Melo's quasi digital. BBD echo units were at the opposite end of the price spectrum to the AMS delays, but Hannett still loved using their crude echo effects. In his equipment Cash Hannett had a massive collection of BBD Echo devices which he had amassed and called his Blue Top Echo and Delay Boxes. The first synthesizers Hannett and Joy Division guitarist Bernard Sumner both used were Transcendent 2000s and then ARP Omnis. Hannett also owned and used several Crew Gen SX-1000S and an International 4600 synthesizer modular synth on many early recordings. After sessions in the recording studio in the late 70s Hannett would take a quarter-inch tape of his mixes home and play them on his home hi-fi and studio system in his music room which at various times contained a plethora of equipment including Revox A77 and B77 tape recorders, ferrograph tape recorders, two pairs of quad electrostatic loudspeakers stacked double height, two pairs of Tannoy Cheviot 12 monitors, several pairs of Tannoy Lancaster cabinets with HPD-12s and monitor gold-12s in, Tannoy Little Gold monitors, Ferrograph S1 monitors and Loratone Cube speakers. Power amps he had in his music room slash studio at home included Leek, Amcron DC-300As, Quad IIs and Quad 405s, and Phase Linear 700s. During the mid-1980s he had a Tassam half-inch 8-track recording system at home with Tassam and Studio Master mixers. If he played vinyl at his home he had Garrard 301 and 401 turntables with SME arms and a Thorin's turntable. His love of hi-fi equipment and collecting vinyl from an early age was part of his career path to becoming a legendary producer. As a producer, Hannett obsessed over drum sounds. He was never content until they completely coincided with the sounds in his head. Legend has it that he once forced Joy Division drummer Stephen Morris to take apart his drum kit during a recording session and reassemble it to include additional parts from a toilet. He also reputedly had Morris set up his kit on a first floor flat roof outside the fire escape at Cargo Recording Studios, Rochdale. The studio was used for the recording of digital, glass, atmosphere. Dead Souls, and Ice Age. Hannett's unorthodox production methods resulted in drum sounds mixed with synthesizers that were both complex and highly distinctive. 
according to Hannett, there was a lot of space in, Joy Division's, sound. They were a gift to a producer, because they didn't have a clue. They didn't argue. A factory sample was the first thing I did with them. I think I'd had the new AMS delay line for about two weeks. It was called Digital. It was heaven sent. A riff developed with Factory and he sued them in 1982 over various financial matters. The dispute was eventually settled out of court. The lawsuit is listed as part of the Factory Records catalogue as FAC 61. When Hannett returned to produce The Happy Mondays he worked as a freelance producer, and was not reinstated as a Factory director. Suzanne O'Hara was his partner from 1972 until 1984. They lived together from 1975 in Chalton and Didsbury, in Manchester. Suzanne worked with Martin at Music Force, a musicians cooperative in Manchester, until it closed, when Hannett's production career began to develop, around 1979. Death, post factory, Hannett's career spiraled into decline due to his heavy drinking and drug use, especially his use of heroin. His weight eventually reached 26 stone. Hannett died on April 18, 1991 at the age of 42 in Manchester, as a result of heart failure. Hannett is survived by a wife, son, and stepdaughter. His headstone at Manchester Southern Cemetery pays him tribute as the creator of the Manchester Sound. A film documentary a Euro looking at Martin Hannett's whole life and featuring many of the people he was in bands with and engineered or produced a Euro was released on DVD on the 23rd anniversary of his death on April 10, 2014. A book was released the same day, Martin Hannett A Euro Pleasures of the Unknown by Chris Hewitt. Several weeks after his death, Factory Records released Martin, the work of Martin Hannett as a tribute. Fictional portrayals Hannett was portrayed by actor Andy Serkis in the 2002 film 24-Hour Party People, which was based on Tony Wilson's career as the co-founder of Factory Records and the horse section Ienda nightclub. In the DVD commentary, Wilson notes a review that described Hannett as Serkis' strangest role, and points out that Serkis is best known for his portrayal of Gollum in Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Wilson concludes that the reviewer's implication is correct that indeed, Hannett was far stranger than the Lord of the Rings character. Hannett was portrayed by Ben Naylor in Anton Corbage's film Control. Selected discography. Equals albums produced equals, Belt and Braces Road Show Band, Belt and Braces Road Show Band LP 1975 Private Pressing A Euro Rare Tracks Issued on Hannett Maverick Producer Compilation CD, Pete Farrow, who says there's no beach in Stockport. Recorded 1977 issued 2001 on CD by Azit Morpheus and on Maverick producer Hannett compilation CD, John Cooper Clark, Disguise and Love 1978, Jilted John, True Love Stories 1978, The Jurati Column, The Return of the Jurati Column 1979, Joy Division, Unknown Pleasures 1979, Pauline Murray and the Invisible Girls, Pauline Murray and the Invisible Girls 1979, Basement 5. 1965 A Euro 1980 and in dubbed 1980, John Cooper Clark, Snap, Crackle and Bop 1980, Joy Division, Closer 1980, Magazine. The Correct Use of Soap 1980, The Psychedelic Furs, The Psychedelic Furs 1980, A Certain Ratio, to Each. 1981, Joy Division, Still 1981, Magazine, Magic, Murder and the Weather 1981. New Order, Movement 1981, Section 25, Always Now 1981, John Cooper Clark, Zip Style Method 1982, The Names, Swimming 1982, Orchestra Rouge, Yellow Laughter 1982, Armand Altair, Nocturne Flamboyant 1983, Blue in Heaven, All the God's Men 1985, The Stone Roses, The Martin Hannett Album 1985 Walk in the Walk, Walk the Walk 1987, Happy Mondays, Bummed 1988, The High, Somewhere. Soon 1990, Joy Division Martin Hannett's Personal Mixes 2007, Joy Division in the Studio with Martin Hannett 2008, Johnny and the Coal Demons, Walk the Walk April 2014. Equals Singles and EPs Produced Equals, Buzzox.
Spiral Scratch 1976 as Martin Zero, Jilted John, Jilted John 1978, Joy Division, Transmission 1979, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, Almost 1979 as Martin Zero, A Certain Ratio, Flight 1979 1980s, A Certain Ratio, Do the Do EP 1980, Kevin Ewick, Haystack 1980, Joy Division, Love Will Tear Us Apart 1980, U2, 11 O'Clock Tick Tock 1980, Pauline Murray and the Invisible Girls, Mr. X 1980, Pauline Murray and the Invisible Girls, Searching for Heaven 1981, Crispy Ambulance, Live on a Hot August Night 1981, ESG, ESG 1981, Kissing the Pink, Don't Hide in the Shadows 1981, New Order, Ceremony 1981, New Order, Everything's Gone Green 1981, New Order, Procession 1981, Mini Pops, Dolphin Spurt 1981, Tunnel Vision, Watching the Hydroplanes 1981, Stockholm Monsters, Fairy Tales 1981, The Names, Night Shift 1980, The Names, Calcutta 1981, The Names, The Astronaut 1982, Blue in Heaven, Across My Heart 1984, The Stone Roses, So Young Slash Tell Me 1985, Kit, Overshadowing Me 1990, Kitchens of Distinction, Quick as Rainbows 1990, New Fast Automatic Daffodils, Get Better 1991, World of Twist, She's a Rainbow 1991. Equals Compilations Equals, Martin, The Work of Martin Hannett, and Here is the Young Man, Zero, A Martin Hannett Story 1977 A Euro 1991, Martin Hannett Maverick Producer, Genius and Musician 2 CD Set. See also, Music of Manchester. References External links, The Martin Hannett Biography Project, Martin Hannett Biography at LTM, Interview with John Savage, Martin Hannett Page. The work of record producer Martin Hannett, Martin Hannett and Tony Wilson in Strawberry Studios, July 1980 on YouTube Martin Hannett explaining his production of Pauline Murray and the Invisible Girls The Visitor Song. A page about working with Martin in the early 1980s.